Hello everyone, welcome to the 43rd Toronto International Film Festival and this screening of Never Look Away. Thank you so much for making it here on such a uh, early rainy morning. My name is Adam Cook and I'm from the festival programming team. To begin, we would like to acknowledge that today's event takes place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. We are grateful to be able to work in this community year-round. Reminder that this film is eligible for the Gross People's Choice Award. You can vote for your favorite films at tiff.net slash vote. We would like to thank Beta Cinema, Sony Pictures Classics, and Mongrel Media for making this screening possible. And we would also like to thank German Films for their generous support. Now, I'm sure just about everyone in this cinema is familiar with Florian's first film, The Lives of Others, which we had here in 2006. And of course went on to win Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film, and we are grateful to have his latest uh, tremendous and tremendously ambitious film. So without further ado, please welcome Florian Henkel von Donnersmark. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be here, and I, I know how much I owe to the uh, to the Toronto Film Festival, it really is true. It's you, you took a, a chance on the lives of others when it was a very unknown film, and and that helped me a lot. Um, and I'm very impressed how the Toronto public. You, I was convinced that I would be here in front of an empty audience because, <laughs> uh, but um, you know, I I don't think I've ever seen a film at 8:30 in my life. <laughs> so I'm really impressed by your discipline. <laughs> um, you know, this is the um, this is the result of uh, many years of very hard work, um, of of really trying to say everything that uh, you know, I've been thinking about for a whole lifetime about how art and how art comes about, and um, you know, also about uh, um, my country, Germany. Uh, I think you know, I've I've lived outside of Germany now for. Um, many years and having my childhood and I you know I, I always I always thought of myself as more of maybe you know kind of a world citizen and so on but you know once you're really away from a country for a long time you realize that's not true the country that you are from shapes you very much and it, it occupies a large part of your thinking and um, and I think you cannot um, extract yourself from from history and politics especially of the country that you live in um, and, you know, what, one thing that I thought was interesting in the making of this film was that we all felt um, an incredible responsibility towards our parents and grandparents, you know, who in most cases were not alive anymore, but, uh, you know, of, of somehow tr all the actors felt that, uh, all the department heads were trying to get, to do justice in a way to their story and to, uh, to the, to the uh, decades that they lived through, that we didn't live through, but that somehow, you know, maybe we have to tell now because you know it was a very complicated situation after uh, after the end of these various dictatorships that crazily Germany has has uh, has been through is that you know afterwards people didn't really speak so much about uh, that time because uh, you know those who were guilty had a good reason not to speak and those who were not guilty didn't want to speak because they didn't want you know their kids to say oh you know yeah you say you were not guilty but you're all guilty you know and and so it was a it, it's it's really something that it's in a way I think on our generation to 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 really look into these stories carefully and and to tell them and so I mean it's it's a it's a long film but I hope that um, I hope that you will see why it had to had to have this length and I hope that you enjoy it and uh, my actors and I will will be here afterwards to uh, to answer any questions that you may have, and and uh, they're they're very excited to be here, and as am I. So uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so very much for, for, for your very kind welcome to the film. Let me introduce to you the people who, um, who, who made this film with me and then the people who really made the film, which is the actors. Um, that is, first is my producer, Quirin Burke, who also produced The Lives of Others, uh, is a, a, a fighter for, fought for this film. 
Then, uh, you know, an actress who to me really was a revelation, I, I must say, this is uh, Paula Berwin, my wonderful casting director, who's really, you know, there, there is a discipline in filmmaking, which is casting. It's really, it's an art, and there are real geniuses in that field. And I have the incredible privilege of working with a woman, uh, Simone Bear, who, you know, looks into my soul, knows what I'm looking for as an actor, and finds them for me. So this was uh, Paula. It was really, you know, I, I can tell you, I can use every single take that I've ever uh, uh, done with Paula, because uh, it's it's always so precise, always so emotional, and a and, uh, really great experience. So please remember this name very carefully, because I think you'll be hearing a lot of it. <laughs> Caught up there, <laughs> and, 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 and just a wonderful person. So, um, Sebastian Koch, um, that is this man, who, who, who was, <laughs> who I can tell you is, is every bit as evil as the character that you've just seen on screen. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, it, is, it is to me, he was my champion who helped me make the lives of others happen. And, um, and, and, and was really someone, he even let me uh, use his, his lake house to write the first uh, uh, parts of this screenplay. <laughs> and I actually came to him and I said, uh, before writing it, I said, only if you will play this uh, ferocious villain will I be willing to to write the script <laughs> and he said why the villain <laughs> and I said you know why <laughs> but um, but no no he is really the kindest and 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 most you know I mean just to give you a sense of in a way how Sebastian works when he um, when he made this film he said for a year beforehand he cancelled all his projects and and said I just want to find my way into this character to really uh, you know f f someone find that part because it was so far away from who he really is he's an incredibly kind and caring person a wonderful father uh, in case anybody of you have doubts <laughs> uh, and uh, so so that was really something something very special Tom Schilling I mean is really uh, this is, I, I just, <laughs> Um, I, I I met uh, Tom when um, when I was still in film school presenting shorts. He was still in school, <laughs> and um, and and uh, and I, I met him at a at a festival through German Films, where he was presenting a film by there's a wonderful German director by the name of Hans Christian Schmidt. And Hans Christian Schmidt had made a film uh, about boarding school life, and um, and and uh, Tom played the lead in that. And I was completely just mesmerized by the precision and by the fact that I saw something in in Tom, which was you know a quality that um, is incredibly rare in actors, and that is that he doesn't have to say anything and you still see everything. I mean, Tom is someone who can, with one gesture, he can tell you a story, and with his eyes, you know, I I can see everything through your eyes. And it was really you know I'll tell you at the editing room every day we discovered new gifts. Uh, from uh, from Tom and I became an even greater fan. So I don't know this this I don't know what this film would be without you. So <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Well, now that you've done such a beautiful job of introducing us to the actors, I have a question for each of you about what it was that compelled you and fascinated you about being involved in such a unique historical film. Shall we I can start? start with you. Maybe we can okay. go in a row. Okay. Um, is that on? Yeah. Um, I I really remember the first time I met Florian, and we were sitting in a cafe for I think six or seven or eight hours, <laughs> talking about every scene. And it's so true what Florian uh, at that time said to me that the problem with scripts is that it's only a document, and it needs so much. Um, pictures to that you slightly see what the movie could be in the end and I read that script and I was like Florian I don't know what kind of movie that's going to be because it's so rich and that so much in it and Florian took his time to really tell me everything he he was thinking why he wants to do that movie and then realizing what a person Florian is and what time that could be shooting this movie with him and as well with my uh, colleagues. I was like, okay, I really want to be part of it. So that's probably the answer. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, yeah, first of all, thank you really for attending um, our screening. I mean, 8.30 is... Um. Yes, these people. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, you um, have the strongest bladders of anyone <laughs> I've ever encountered. So. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, but I mean, basically, it's always the same. There are two, two big things that matters for me as an actor. It's a script and it's... Uh, the director and I, I read this fantastic script which is like a symphony and it's so smart I think and he has this um, this um, immense strength to especially put the whole film like life of others in the last picture you know the the the, the last scene is always like a um, how do you say it? it's wie ein, ein, ein destillat des ganzen films how do you say that in English um, Goodness, uh, I don't know. <laughs> ah, okay, <laughs> too complicated. But yeah, to 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 okay. to, to cut the sh uh, story short, I love just love the the script, and uh, I loved life of uh, the life of the others, life of others, and um, yeah. So there was no question for and, me. And and, and 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 now we love each other. <laughs> it's really true, Sebastian. Yeah, for me, uh, uh, as he said before, we did lives of, uh, The Lives of Others. It was a very good experience. We know each other since almost 15 years. And to work with Florian is for me like coming home, you know. So we are so uh, brothers in, in arms in the same spirit. It's a very fine uh, uh, view to, to everything. So he believes in, in details, which I really love. And what we can do very well is prepare. And uh, a good preparation means for me everything. So on set, it's all done. Just have to do it. And I was very happy when he pitched me that story four years ago. And I said, this is what you have to do because it's, you are so um, sensitive and smart. And, and he knows a lot about history, about German history, about art. And it's all in this film. And if someone can do that, it's him. Thank you. <laughs> in the introduction, Florian, you talked about how the film dealt with things you've considered your entire life. Could you elaborate on the impetus for the project? You know, I'd, I'd always been uh, fascinated by the fact that uh, human beings, when, when something terrible happens to them, you know, they can decide to have that traumatize them for their lifetime, or they can decide to, you know, turn it into something great. And in the case of artists, and this film is about a great artist, they can turn it into art. There was this line from Ilya Kazan's autobiography that always struck me, st stuck with me, where he said, he talked about his work with geniuses, and he meant uh, Marlon Brando and Arthur Miller and Tennessee Williams. And he said um, that he felt that their artistic talent was merely, his words were, the scab on the wounds that life had dealt them. And I, I felt that was such a profound way of looking at it because you know it's it's it really is like that it's a metaphor that really works if you think it through uh, because if the wound is still open you can't create art because you know the blood is still flowing and you're still in pain and you're still at risk of, of, of dying um, but once it's healed you know the greater the wound was the greater the scab the greater the talent um, and and I thought you know I'd, I'd really like to find a way to illustrate that that it's you know it's 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 very strange I find in any creative endeavor, possibly in any endeavor, that if you look at it the right way, um, you will suddenly find that all the things from your life which never seem to make sense, all the unnecessary pain, all the, you know, all the suffering that every one of us goes through, you know, was somehow needed to do the great things that only we can do. You know, and I think that I think that's actually one of the reasons why we love art so much, and why if we see a great work of art. It gives us some kind of courage. Um, I find that in museums very often. You know, I just find, wow, this gives me courage. I see what this person has suffered through, and I see that he decided to make something great of it. You know, and that's what I wanted to illustrate. Yeah. All right. I bet the audience has some questions for our guests. Please raise your hand. Yes. I'll, I'll, no, no, no. Don't worry. I'll repeat it so everyone can hear you. You don't have super ears. <laughs> So the question is about why you chose not to show an explicit aha moment where he you know, puts together the connection between his father-in-law and his past. You do have super hearing. <laughs> I'm paid okay. to do this. So. Okay, that's it. Um, 
You know, um, I think that um, th there is there is a, another level of understanding, which is not conscious understanding. You know, being able to name something, but you you know it in your heart of hearts. You know, it's just like you know if someone really loves you. You know, you can sense if someone has ever spoken badly about, I mean, you can sense it. You, a woman can always sense if someone has a disrespectful attitude towards women. You know, it's just, I'm always amazed by that. You know, that, you know, my wife or my daughter is, will tell me, oh, this guy has a really bad attitude towards women. I say, no, he's a really nice guy. And then later I found out they were completely right. You know, <laughs> there's, there's something, there's, there is a deep level um, of knowledge in us, and I think that 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 cannot be verbalized in a way. And I think on that artistic level, he has understood it. You know, I think he completely understood it. And um, and I think on that same level, somehow, strangely, he understood that he's been completely unmasked. You know, and and taking that idea further, you know, he now knows that. Uh, so so Tom's character knows that he can go into this press conference and just to protect himself. You know, not tell the truth at all about this. No, I don't even know these people, you know. And he knows that on an artistic level, that spark will come across from his paintings and that these sensitive people that are the art journalists might say, oh, you know, well, I mean, this guy has not experienced anything in his life, but these are amazing paintings. Now, why do they say they're amazing paintings? They're not that amazing. They're just paintings of photographs, but they're full of what he feels about it, and that's art. You know, so it's in a way about that other plane of knowledge, you know, that... Does, does that answer your question or? Yes, okay, thank you. More questions, yes. Oh, thank one you. Of the she best said one of the best ever movies she's, uh, she's ever seen. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm proud to repeat. Yeah. Uh, okay, but the question. Mm -hmm. Good. So the question is about uh, to what extent was Gerard Richter maybe involved in the project? Well, I mean, you know, let's say on a spiritual level, on a, uh, a pretty high level, <laughs> um, he, um, so it, elements of his biography were what inspired me to, to invent this story. You know, um, um, it's of course highly fictionalized and, you know, but I believe in fiction. I believe that fiction can be more truthful than fact, which is subject to you know the messy coincidences of of, of life, and um, so um, I invented the story. I talked to many many artists um, who helped me. You know, I used elements from all of their lives to to, to make these characters real. Um, but then I felt, you know, I would also like to talk to Richter, which was actually a really difficult task because he lives a little bit of an Aramite life <laughs> in uh, outside of Cologne. But um, uh, um, f when I got through to him, I thought, you know, I'd just tell him the story and see from his reaction what, you know, how crazy does he think it is. Um, and he, I, I think precisely because it wasn't a biography, you know, but just used some elements of his life to invent something like he often does in his paintings, he was, you know, he, he, he was really, he, he found this... Yeah, for, for some reason, he suddenly was so generous with his time. I ended up uh, staying seven hours the first day. Then he said, do you want to come back tomorrow? I said, sure. Um, then I stayed you know, another day, and it went on like that for four weeks. He even let me record all of the conversations. And it gave me a lot of background knowledge. At the end, we went to Dresden to the places of his childhood, looked at the places where he'd painted his paintings, where he'd lived as a child and so on, and, um, and, and as a young man. And um, you know, that, that definitely helped, um, helped me a lot because it just... You know, he's he's a very admirable person, and just someone who's been through so much. Um, and I, you know, certainly used uh, um, used elements from that. But you know, again, m m my belief is truly in fiction. And to me, um, you know, um, Citizen Kane, for example, would be a lot less interesting if it were called Citizen Hurst. You know, because I, I, I there's there's the thing if you if you make if you make an actual biography of someone. There's there's two problems, you know, or there's two possible paths you can take. Either you veer way off from reality, and then it's kind of unfair, isn't it, to say no, no, that's his life, but you know, it's all fiction, um, and so then it's it makes no sense. Or you stay completely true to facts, and you know, so you might have a great idea, you know, oh, this guy could have a sledge called Rosebud, um, and then no, he didn't have one. I can't use that. You know, it, it, it doesn't it doesn't really work like that. You know, you you have to follow that inner voice to um and so 
I, I, that's why I, you know, decided to, to make, make this completely, you know, fiction. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll repeat that for those who have not heard. No. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Tom. Tom Schilling. <laughs> Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for the opportunity. Oh. I give you a kiss back. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but this gentleman uh, yes, really in the back, he, he, the back, he please. seems to have a... Oh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for pointing that out. You know, really, thank you. This is really, this is someone I believe that um, Max Richter, no relation um, to Gerhard Richter, he's actually English. He um, is, I, I, I think he's the best composer of our generation. He's someone that, you know, we had to wait for a long, long, long time uh, because he's always there. He, he lives two and a half hours outside of London, is always writing his symphonies. And, um, you know, I, I, I then you know finally uh, re you know replied and said um, and I said look I, I'd really like to show you this this uh, film because no music that I put on it works and I some I, I think yours could work and um, then he said um, yes 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 very 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 good he was no he Actually, he, I, I will tell him that you said that because um, because he, um, he 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 said you know I mean it's interesting he's someone who um, uh, who who was born in Germany and then at age I think two or something they moved to England and he has you know in a way spent his life trying to become English um, <laughs> and 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 so so much so that he doesn't even speak uh, very good German um, anymore and um, and then he said that for him this was somehow a rediscovery of Germany and he really started listening to all this German music and you know the kind of you know Schubert Mahler a lot of uh, a lot of those things and and said you know I, I'm gonna create the most German score I ever wrote <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he's gonna be happy to hear that but I'll tell you it was a real adventure working with him because he develops a kind of music and and you know I so hope that he gets recognized because he's he's another one who who lives in Aramite life two and a half hours out, hours outside of London very hard to reach that place and I actually said to him I said you know can you uh, we were in um, I said can you come to um, can you come to Berlin possibly and he said no no I, I live two and a half hours outside of London I said well you know uh, okay I'll come to London and he says no no I, I live two and a half hours outside of London um, <laughs> And then I said, but how is that, you know, uh, I want to show you in a theater. Well, you know, there, there are theaters around there in the village. And, uh, and so Quirin had to organize a theater in his village uh, uh, two and a half hours outside of London. And, but, you know, it was really worth going there. And, uh, and I said to him, I mean, this must, uh, this must you know, I'm, I'm sure that, that, you know, not all people will jump through those hoops. You know, normally people come to the, to the filmmakers. And, uh, and he says, look, if, if, if people aren't willing to come two and a half hours outside of London, then they don't really need me, do they? Uh, you know, it was, it's, kind of, it's very interesting because he knows that he doesn't want anything to upset his concentration, his focus. He's very much a family man also. And... And he just lives his music there, and it was such it was a wonderful spiritual experience spending those weeks with him there and 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 he he developed he developed a few instruments for this movie because for example, he has this theme for uh, Sebastian, which I found so impressive, which is you know it's like um it's as if the music says to you, um you know it can't get any deeper and yet he keeps going lower and lower and lower. And he developed these pianos that have strings that are as, as wide as this room um, to really create these super deep sounds because he says that he wants music to reach you 
um, physically, you know, uh, and he says that that it should not be it should not be just an acoustic experience that stops at the, uh, you know, at the eardrum. Or uh, he wants he, he he really you know studies how, when do your organs vibrate. You know, he wants you to feel the things physically. And he's a real philosopher of music, a deeply learned man. I mean, he's someone that I really admire. So I'm I'm very happy that you pointed that out. And and uh, uh, I I tried to get him to come, uh, but uh, he lives two and a half hours outside. <laughs> <laughs> we have time for just one last question. Yeah. Uh, yes, please. So, a question yes. is about uh, your idea about everything true being beautiful and relating that to. Yeah. Uh, the eugenics. That's that's a really good question. Well, first of all, it's not my idea. It's the it's the in the moment of you know a schizophrenic delusion that the that the aunt says it. You know, but um, it is actually something that I took from uh, Keats. There's a there's a, a beautiful uh, poem that he wrote to a Grecian urn where 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 this ends in in these lines, and it was it was um you know a a, a poem that made him very famous as a young man. Uh, that had this message, you know, it says, uh, um, uh, beauty is truth, truth, beauty. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and the thing is, and it was something he wrote as a young man. It really established him, I think, strongly as, as one of the great romantic voices. And it also got him, it got him great acclaim and it got him into crazy trouble, you know. And um, up to the present day, you will find people who see that that poem. And I thought, wow, that's really great. Someone just being able to say such a simple sentence and, um, you know, and and so, you know, I'm I'm I really have to point out that that's not. I, I completely understand what you're saying, you know, and that is why it is also a line that has made people uh, so angry. But at the same time, you know, if you ask if you ask the great artists, you know, what 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 do you look for in art? What is it that you're really pursuing? What are you spending your life chasing after? You will find, you know, almost everybody will say truth, and. If they're particularly honest, they will say beauty. So, you know, that's not saying they're identical, but at least there, there's some, there is some kind of connection between those two things. And I think it's certainly something worth exploring and thinking about. And just like, you know, this film tries to explore a little bit where the boundaries between art and 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 madness lie. You know. Um, uh, this is something also, uh, you know, worth thinking about. What do these two things have to do with each other? Is it why does it feel almost like beautiful if you see something that is true? Maybe because it's so rare to just experience that—a moment of truth, you know. So it, it, it's more food for thought than a statement that I would uh, that I would stand by and and, and sign in blood. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And but on that, that note, question. that's all the time we have. Please don't forget to vote for the Grolsch People's Choice Award. Thank you, thank you so thank much you so for much. bringing your film to Toronto.